Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Lopez, and I'm a lifelong educator and college access leader. My initial experience exploring ChatGPT was so profound that I have spent all of my free time over the last year and a half on a learning journey, exploring the opportunities, the risks, and the impact of artificial intelligence in education through my podcast, The AI Education Conversation. Beyond talking with some familiar faces you might know, like the founder of AI for Education, Amanda Bakerstaff, who shared her experiences and perspectives on AI implementation in schools in episode 28, check it out. I've used AI tools like ChatGPT for over a thousand hours. All of these conversations and explorations have led me to today, where I am honored to share my moonshot for AI and education and really the world. While a global pandemic has largely defined this decade up to this point, I believe a realistic trajectory exists for the 2020s to be remembered and defined as the moment something else took place. I believe the 2020s can and will be known as the decade that superhumans were born. I distinctly remember sitting in a movie theater as a high school student and seeing an eccentric billionaire named Tony Stark who leveraged his strengths as a phenomenal mathematician and visionary to create an armored suit, which held technology, which transformed him into a superhuman superhero, Iron Man. While Tony Stark was just a man, Iron Man, protected by his armored suit with flying capabilities and futuristic weapons, could save the day and help others. I remember thinking to myself, how cool would it be if I could be Iron Man? Yet as I saw it, two main problems existed. I wasn't a billionaire, and I also did not have a key piece of technology that I noticed Tony Stark was leveraging to create his Iron Man suits and handle really complicated problems like pressure testing a suit design against atmospheric pressure in shorter time periods. That technological companion was called Jarvis, a virtual assistant with agent-like capabilities who brought Iron Man to life and allowed the suit to function. With OpenAI releasing ChatGPT in November 2022 and all of the developments in artificial intelligence models and capabilities, I believe we are at an inflection point where we will all have access to our very own Jarvis-like technology, and it doesn't cost a billion dollars to tap into. The question now is, will we as individuals build our own Iron Man suits? Now, I'm not talking about the armored suits in the same way that they were envisioned in the Marvel movies. I mean, will we build our technological armor that enhances our strengths, mitigates our weaknesses, and expands our impact towards the specific purposes we've outlined? Imagine a doctor donning an AI-enhanced suit that sharpens diagnostic accuracy by integrating the latest research and technological advancements. The suit not only suggests the most effective treatments, but also automates patient documentation during consultations. As a result, doctors can treat more patients with heightened precision without the burden of paperwork and charts. Envision a teacher equipped with an AI suit, maybe some of you in this call, that crafts personalized, captivating lessons tailored to each student's interests. Before each lesson, the suit predicts and prepares for potential challenges by creating multilingual animated tutorial videos, such as something on YouTube, made effortlessly by using single prompts. It also offers diverse learning materials and translates content for English language learners, ensuring inclusivity. This AI-powered efficiency doesn't just save time, it enriches classroom interactions, allowing teachers to spontaneously introduce anecdotes and activities that resonate personally with students, fostering a nurturing learning environment. Now, while this all may seem like nothing more than my pipe dream, a reminder that two years ago, widely available technology which could produce an essay in seconds, pass the most rigorous academic exams in our world, such as the bar exam, and generate images, audio, and video out of thin air, was incomprehensible for many of us. And yet right now, all of those things are possible, continue to improve, and the world's largest companies and countries for that matter have made continued AI development one of their top priorities. This means we will likely continue to see more sophisticated generative AI models, AI agents, and the mainstream emergence of robotics within the next couple of years. While I believe the 2020s will be known as the dawn of superhumans, this will not be without potential consequences we need to solve for. While my podcast goes into depth on many of these challenges, such as biases, 
intellectual property, environmental challenges, geopolitical concerns, and AI deepfakes, I believe the biggest consequence we need to ensure we solve for is preventing AI haves and have-nots. We cannot allow superhumans to only emerge from highly resourced affluent communities. Regardless of the resources, one promising opportunity with AI schools is that they can be accessed with a device. Unfortunately, we know a device and access is not sufficient for our young people to develop the skills that they need to enter the world that they will inherit, it is going to take concerted effort from the adults most proximal to them, the adults they look up to and trust. Many surveys I've explored over the past year unfortunately show that we are trajecting down a path of creating AI haves and have-nots. AI usage is most frequently used by highly educated white and Asian males. Over the last year, AI exploration and adoption is happening in seismic rates across workforce sectors, but is only a blip in the radar in the public education system. Fortunately, there is time to course correct and heed lessons from other technological consequences we've experienced like social media and create a world and an educational system for our young people which leverages the power of artificial intelligence while mitigating its consequences. The exciting but equally scary part of this is for us to make this course correction, it is going to require a transformation of the educational system. When I think about what a radical transformation of education really looks like, I often try to picture it through the eyes of my nine-month-old son, who will be starting his educational journey in a few years. When my son starts his journey, I know I want a few things to be true about his experience to set him up for life. I believe his educational experience should be heavily focused on durable skills. Things such as collaboration, communication, character, mindfulness, metacognition, leadership, fortitude, critical thinking, creativity. But I also believe his learning experience should be interdisciplinary. Rather than thinking of subjects in isolation, I want him to realize the world is complex. And complex problems require the ability to think in a lot of different disciplines. I also believe my son should have a heavy dose of experiences focused on learning how to use technology and how to develop a strong lens for information integrity. Beneath all of this, I think the most important element of what I hope my son experiences when he goes to school is that he experiences an environment where he feels seen, he feels heard, and he has time to explore his strengths, his values, his purpose, and his interests. These are the foundational conditions, which I believe will cultivate my son's humanity so that he can build his superhumanity. Ironically, if you ask most teachers why they got into teaching, ask many of you listening to this presentation, creating this type of environment is likely a big part of it. But our system has gotten so far away from what education truly needs to be about. Transformation of our system will require us to be bold and to be courageous. It will require us to prioritize conversations which develop AI literacy and be open to the possibility of radically changing our day-to-day -day educational experience. I believe these trade-offs are worth it. And I'm gonna to continue to push for transformation in the spaces that I hold. And I would invite you to do the same. If you're interested in continuing the conversation, check out the AI education conversation on your preferred listening platform or message me on LinkedIn. Humans at the heart of education.